You know, praise the Lord that when you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, fear of him, you call upon his name and he save you. If the Lord genuinely saves you, you are once saved, always saved. You are sealed until the day of redemption. Um, no matter what you do, he's not going to leave you. But see, as a saved person, spirit, soul, and body, we have the capacity to do everything that a lost sinner does. We, we do. Now, the Lord is within us. He will lead us and guide us into all truth. And he has given us his word, the authorized version of the scriptures to follow, where he lets us know what is right and wrong. But you know what, brethren, people? Just because you are a saint of the church of the living God does not mean that you are not capable of doing what any other wicked lost sinner can do. And that doesn't also remove from you error upon your part, even though the Lord who is within you is perfect. But it doesn't remove error from your part. And you know what, brethren? I've been saved for 15 years. I beg, beg your pardon. Please forgive me. Uh, the Lord saved me 15 years ago. And I have made so many stupid mistakes. Sin. And, um, yeah. And, of course, the Lord has brought tremendous change. Uh, you are a new creature. You are a new creature because the Lord lives within you. But, um... You know, I, myself, I have made disastrous decisions, horrendous mistakes as a saint, church of the living God. And see, in this dispensation, um, you will not lose your salvation. We can lose all kinds of things. If we deny him, he will deny us. That doesn't, you know, that's in, um, uh, what is that? That's in Second Timothy chapter 2, I believe that is. But if we deny him, he will deny us, not salvifically, but in mercies, blessings, provision, grace. Um, I mean, his grace, his favor is there uh, upon us because uh, he has sealed us with himself. Hence, he cannot deny himself. OK, let's find that. That is in, I believe that is Second Timothy. That is Second Timothy chapter two, I do believe. I mean, uh, I'm right now here at uh, Bates Park outside. Um, got a lot of stuff going on right now. Lord willing, um, might be able to go see a brother who is in need. But Second Timothy, uh, cha yes, chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 13. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him, dead with him, okay? Dead with him. Died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture, and he shed his blood on the cross for us. We die to ourselves and come to him, come to him. And he saves us if we die to ourselves, if we come to him broken, contrite, you know, taking responsibility and having the, the hell scared out of you. And you call upon his name and he save you. OK, but see, we be dead with him, dead to self, dead to the world, dead to ourselves, more, mostly. OK, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. OK. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Now, see, again, I tell you constantly, that is not talking about salvation. That is talking in other means, okay? When you come to the Lord and he truly saves you, you are once saved, always saved, sealed unto the day of redemption. But see, us walking according to the scriptures is not by gunpoint. It's not by force. We got to make the right decisions. And the more you harden your heart and the more as a saint you say, I'm not going to do that, 
the Lord will hand you over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Okay? All right? And remember, brethren, if it gets so bad, if it gets so bad with someone who is saved, he will kill you. But see, here it is now, verse uh, 13 shows us that 12 is not talking about salvation. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. We are of his bones and of his flesh. So we are once saved, always saved, because he dwells within us, okay? But see, while our sins are forgiven because they're on him, the consequences of our actions, which we have talked about before, aren't necessarily taken away. Um, here, let me let me move out of the sun. It gets uh, <laughs> gets gets pretty warm over here. Yeah, so I'm at Bates Park. Bates Park. Um, it's a baseball park where the, you know the people come to watch their little darlings play their lovely um, idolatrous baseball. Got mulberry trees here. Um, it's actually a very nice park. It is um, good for exercise and whatnot. But uh, coming to a little bit more shady spot. <laughs> so the sun ain't beating down on my head. All right, here, let's go into the dugout, as it were. <laughs> okay. All right, beg your pardon, brethren, people. Watch out for where you sit. Okay. All right. Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26. Verses 40. On to verse 46. Now you got to remember Leviticus pertaining on to Levi. The Levitical priests, okay? A lot of explanation is in the book of Leviticus about for the priests and the offerings and stuff like that. This is instruction in righteousness. Verse 40 on to verse 46 in uh, Leviticus 26. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers, which they're with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, Hmm. Do you know, as a saint of the Church of the Living God today, you can walk contrary to the Lord who dwells within you? Any of you saints, you know what I'm talking about. Okay? It doesn't, it doesn't work out well for you. Oh, no, not at all. But you can, you can do that, unfortunately. And that I also have walked contrary unto them. And have brought them into the land of their enemies, handed them over. Okay? Got to remember that warning we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. To deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, all things are lawful for you, but not all things are expedient. You can do exactly everything that a lost person can do. You can. But it's going to cost you. Not your salvation but in other ways. Have you walked contrary to the Lord? Oh, you're, you're some perfect creature, right? You're like some perfect creature, King James Bible believing Christian, right? The, from the Northeast, you're perfect. Never make mistakes, right? Right? Yeah. Have you ever walked contrary to the Lord? And even though even though he will not deny himself, meaning that he lives within you. That doesn't mean that as his son or daughter, whatever you have chosen that is contrary to him, doesn't mean that he's going to pelt it with troubles. Verse 41 again. And that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they, and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity. And this is interesting because whether you accept it or not, you're going to go through it. Okay. But see the, the 
humbling of, Lord, I've done contrary to you. I have, like Paul talks about, you reap to the flesh, you're going to sow to the flesh. You reap to the spirit, you're going to reap, uh, you reap to the spirit, you're going to sow to the spirit. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely, brethren. Absolutely. So, which one are you sowing on to? Okay? Which one are you sowing on to? But the consequences of your actions, your sin is on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the one thing we don't have to worry about. But the other things, or be concerned with, excuse me, the other things, whatever they are, and unless you're some perfect creature from out northeast or from um, the coasts of England or some select uh, precious people in Canada <laughs> or in the United Kingdom or here in America, wherever you are, about these perfect creatures, you know, um, most of us, in one way or another, as saints, have walked contrary to the Lord. And we can pee, moan, and whine about it, but, you know, like Peter said unto the Lord when the Lord in sarcasm said, will ye also go away? And Peter looked at the Lord and like, Lord, to where, I'll, to where shall we go? Okay, you have the words of everlasting life, and we are, con we are convinced that thou art the Christ. Yeah. You know, brethren, I've been here. I've been there. You know, I've been here before, you know, with things where you might have made some really dumb decisions. Let's go with it. Remember like what Job said, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. Once this is all over, dear brethren, you're going to go to heaven. But see, when you're down here, the way you serve him reflects him. And that's what you ought to be concerned about. Let's continue. Verse 42. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Sabbaths while she lieth desolate without them. And they shall, ex and they shall accept the punishment of their iniquity, because even because they despised my judgments and because their soul abhorred my statutes. Now, for us as the church of the living God, you know, we, there is a different uh, dispensational difference here, Okay. Uh, I am convinced absolutely that a saint of the church of the living God who has the Lord within them, they cannot abhor the word of God. What happens is when we make the stupid decisions and the Lord brings chastisement or correction through the word, sometimes we, we might want to what? Close the scriptures and put them away, right? Right? Right, brethren, right? Now, see, the thing that we ought to do is even when we are in the worst case, that's when we need to be in the Word even more, okay? But see, when you as a saved man or saved woman will make the wrong choice and be stubborn and walk contrary, you, your salvation will not be affected but see, the way you serve the Lord reflects him. Verse 44, And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them, to destroy them utterly, and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Then you go ahead and you continue to read in the book of Numbers, of course, about the disaster of how God had Moses go and uh, send spies into the promised land, remember? And um, they go and check it out for 40 days. 
then they come back and they say, hey, the fruit of the land is good, but sons of Ankh are there. And the, the, you know, the giants are there. And uh, we were grasshoppers. We can't do this. And Caleb and Joshua, they're like, dude, hey, just trust the Lord. Okay, he's like, there it is. Trust me and let's go do this. But they didn't. And they reaped a heavy consequence because of that. And um, after God said, okay, you blew it. That's done. Now you're going to be in the wilderness for 40 years. So y'all die off. And your children that you whine to me about, they're the ones who are going to get to go into the promised land, not you. It's done. Turn your back. Let's go. That's it. Done. Psst. Over. What did they do? It's like... They went before Moses. You can read this on your own in the book of Numbers. They go to Moses. Okay, yeah, we sinned. Okay, we'll go. We'll go up now and do as the Lord said. Well, here we are. And Moses is like, don't. You, the Lord's not with you. Okay, that ship has sailed. You blew it. Even though he sought it with tears and much repentance. Remember Esau? <laughs> the dunderhead, you know. Like Samson, Esau wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. He wasn't the brightest bulb in the box. Now, granted, I would not dare say to Samson's face, uh, hey, you, you kind of, you're kind of a dunderhead, ain't you, Samson? <laughs> I wouldn't have said that to his face, of course. Why? Because he would rip, you know, rip me to shreds. But um, Esau sold away his birthright for a bowl of soup. But notice when you read about Esau and that thing with uh, Jacob, sell me thy birthright, that Jacob gave him much more than just what he asked for. He even gave him bread and water, not just what he asked for. All this will I give thee. <laughs> uh, praise the Lord that when he saves you you are eternally secure praise the Lord praise the Lord but you gotta remember brethren the way you serve the Lord reflects him okay and when you make the wrong choices and the Lord brings upon you a devastation what can you do are you going to be like Adam it's like oh no the woman thou gavest me to be with uh, she did give me of the tree and I did eat no you blame. see that's what lost people do and see even though our flesh you know the skin suit even though our flesh <laughs> the skin suit uh, wants to like point elsewhere we got the Lord within us remember King David when Nathan came before him and he and you know, David was all like you know he had killed uh, Uriah because he had lied, he lay with Bathsheba and she was with child in adultery and he kills Uriah and then Nathan comes to him and tells him the uh, little parable which was about King David and King David's like oh all indignant and then what Nathan do thou art the man one thing you lack and see when you have the Lord within you you can't escape that Oh, you know, the debate comes up. Well, can a saved person sear their conscience? You can quench the spirit, absolutely. And we are warned not to. But you got to remember the consequences, the dangers. Yes, the dangers will not be to salvation. But there again, what does the Lord mean to you? What does the Lord mean to you if you're willing to almost mock his name, mock him? Our salvation is secure. 
But the road we walk on may be paved with all kinds of rocks and stones. And the question is, did I put them there? <laughs>